this evening, um, I thought I would uh, talk uh, all about epidemics. And the reason I've chosen this as a topic and chosen infectious diseases as my first year uh, of lectures uh, is because they were uh, in this this year we're coming into, which is the 500th year of the birth of Thomas Gresham, by far the dominant part of medicine. So when this college was founded, medicine was very largely infectious diseases. And they're broadly divided into endemic diseases, diseases that are there all the time in the background, of which there were very many during Sir Thomas Gresham's lifetime, over the top of which occur epidemics, where you suddenly get a surge of a particular infection. And during his lifetime, there were many epidemics. That we know about, almost certainly many epidemics we do not know about. So there were, for example, two uh, moderately sized plague epidemics uh, here in London, a syphilis epidemic that really occurred throughout his entire lifetime uh, and in, in many ways come to an end. And until the beginning of this century, or the last century rather, uh, a smallpox uh, epidemic on the background of uh, ongoing... Smallpox, typhus epidemics, uh, and a disease that was considered pretty unique to the UK, UK uh, the English swe sweating sickness, uh, which of which there were two major outbreaks in his lifetime. The English swe sweating sickness, uh, which of which there were two major outbreaks in his lifetime. So there were very many epidemics at that stage. A plague, which is to say he had uh, two uh, epidemics in his lifetime, is an example of the extraordinary power infectious diseases have historically had to shape human history, but also the human capacity to respond to those diseases. Exact estimates are, are obviously difficult and views vary, but I think most people who've looked at this consider the plague reduced the world population during one of its, its bigger pandemics from an estimated 450 million to around 350 million, uh, maybe slightly more than that, in the 14th century. An astonishing drop in global mortality. And Europe, which was very badly affected, between 30 and 60 percent of the European population died. The impact of that on society clearly cannot be exaggerated. The risk of a plague epidemic or pandemic now, a significant one, uh, is now zero. Although epidemics, as we'll come back to, occur to this day. This is, a, however, also the centenary year and the centenary month of the last... Really serious global pandemic. Uh, and that was the 1918-20 H1N1 influenza pandemic. Also, that was the 1918-20 H1N1 really serious global pandemic uh, and that was the 1918-20 H1N1 influenza pandemic also known as the Spanish flu. This probably killed between 50 and 100 million people and to put that in some kind of perspective I've just showed the death toll in the United States where the data are reasonably reliable comparing the number of people who died in that flu pandemic in the USA with all the people who died in every war in the last century in the US. More people died in that single pandemic than everybody in the US who died in every war, First World War, Second World War, Vietnam and Korea. That puts in perspective quite how serious this war was. As I say, there are people living today who lived through that pandemic. These kinds of epidemics and pandemics can come on extraordinarily uh, suddenly. And very rapidly. So let's take that 1918 pandemic, and I'm taking the USA because we combine good data and and large geography. Looking at this map we have here on the screen, what you can see in dark colours are the area where this entered the United States uh, and spread before September the 14th. Of that year. This is exactly 100 years away. Yeah. The areas in the light colours, most of which are relatively remote, are where it had got to after October the 5th. So that spread across the USA occurred in a period when there was very very much limited transport just after the war over the period of less than a month. And if you look at the sp spike in mortality we saw in that year, comparing the October of that year to the October of the years previously, and this, these were the years of privation, this is during a war, you can see the massive impact that had a mortality just in this month of October, exactly 100 years ago. So when really serious pandemics happen, they slam into society with extraordinary force and speed. 